Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have a Peugeot 308 SW. Uh, it's a 2.0 and it's got our blue. So, first of all, we'll start the vehicle up. I don't know if those um, warnings have already gone off while I've had the ignition on. Let's do a recycle, just to be sure. So you got you got all that deep in there, yeah, coming up. Engine fault, engine lights on, service lights on. It came up pretty quickly there. So I'm using my launch Eurotab 3 here. Um, we have particle filter overloaded. High pressure fuel circuit below the minimum threshold. Hopefully that's just a clogged fuel filter. Otherwise he needs a uh, fuel pump, which wouldn't be uncommon in one of these. Uh, communication fault with the CAN bus. Uh, sorry, with the built-in systems interface. Um, so, looks like we've got a block DPF to deal with. And probably the cause of it would be the high pressure fuel pump there. We'll do a little live data there on the pressure of the DPF, 40 HBA or millibars at idle, which is quite high to be honest, still. It's not the highest I've ever seen, but it is high. We'll hold the revs up to 3000 RPM. Well, uh, it won't let us, 2500 RPM. We got 150 on the pressure. Thermal agent of the particle filter, 0%. Total weight of soot in the particle filter, 22 grams. So we're going to have a look at the coolant temperature. Make sure that's reaching 90 degrees. Now it might take a while, these are diesels. Okay, so while that engine's warming up a little bit, I've asked the customer, when was the last time you said it serviced? Two days ago. Um, now, I asked him, has he had the fuel filter changed? He said, well, he assumed so. If you can look at that, The amount of dust on it, that definitely hasn't been touched in a long time. So we're going to change that fuel filler and hopefully fix that fuel pressure. Um, but if not, he's going to be looking at a injection pump, which is down there. It's not too bad of a job on these, nice and easy really. Okay, we have 90 degrees on the thermostat. It's a nice day for it. I'm going to take off this metal case in here and we'll get the uh, fuel filler shit. Filter changed at first. Take out the plug. I'll just lift up that little tab there with a uh, pick. We should be able to just pull that out now. Press that down and pull it out. Okay, we've got the fuel pipes off. Got a 24 mil socket. And we're just going to open the filter housing here. Now, hopefully, we don't see a lot of glitter in here. Because that would point to needing a new injection pump. Okay, we've got the cap off. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. We've got a little chunk of aluminium. Let's try and get this out. Let's see if we can see any more in the bottom of the filter housing. So yeah, unfortunately I can see a lot of swarf in there, aluminium swarf. So it's likely that his uh, fuel pump is on the way out soon. Okay, so we'll just get this cleaned out for now. And uh, hopefully we'll just do the best we can on that for now, get it cleaned out. Okay, I've got the cleaning fluid here set up. This is the DPF cleaning fluid from Launch UK, the Launch UK gun. We're going to connect that up to our compressor on the airline there. Okay, we're under the car there, and the DPF right there. We've just got the hose there disconnected right at the front. So you've got a metal pipe there that inserts into the center of the DPF. 
runs down there and you can disconnect the pressure holes from it there. Okay, now we can just get the fluid squeezed in. Okay, so now we've uh, inserted all our fluid in there. I think what I might do on this one is just leave the uh, gun attached. Then we'll start up the vehicle, let it run for a minute, and we'll just spray the other half a bottle in there while the engine's running. So we'll let that sit for around five minutes or so just to let it soak in before we start it up. Okay, we'll start the vehicle up now. <laughs> Give it a few revs. So we've got a nice uh, brown colour of foam there coming out. Right now with the vehicle running, we're going to get some more of that fluid in there. We'll just keep this holding on until the fluid runs out. Okay, we are back in the vehicle. Get the live data set back up on a graph if we can, it's just so you can see the. Uh, we'll uh, rev that up to 3000 RPM. Sorry, it's difficult to see it over there. It's already dropped considerably there, but it uh, doesn't seem to be moving any further. Oh, there, we go, there we go. It's dropping a bit now. So anything under 80 of this I'd consider is uh, just about okay. If we can get it down to 50 or 40, I've seen them go as low as 20. But uh, on revs, anything under 100 some people consider to say is okay, and on idle under 10. So they, they are nice sort of easy numbers to remember, I suppose. 10 on idle and under 100 on 3000 RPM. Uh, this one doesn't allow me to go to 3000 RPM, about 2500. Maybe we will get that um, to go higher once we've reset the DPF soon. So we're now down to 50 there. Let's let that idle and see where we are now. We're under 10. Accelerate it back up. Now again, this customer has admitted to me that uh, the car does less than less than two miles a day. So, but he's planning on taking a trip to uh, Italy soon, and he's asking my advice. Would I would I risk it with the fuel pump? That's a really hard thing to say. I couldn't advise someone to drive to Italy when they know the fuel pump is uh, breaking down but I do know this engine and I've seen a lot of people um, have to have that issue with the fuel pump for a couple of years and they've just still been driving around so it does start breaking down and it will start giving you issues but you do get a lot of warning usually of these engines you'll usually if you try and accelerate it too hard it will sort of cut back or give you into lip mode and you can continue to drive it for months beyond but um, of course, the longer you leave it, the worse it gets, and the more swarf you're going to enter into the system. So it's easier to get it done straight away if you can. They're not a difficult repair to do on these, and the injection pump is not expensive. So we've seemed to have settled out there now at uh, 40 millibars on the DPF. So let's let go of the revs. Hopefully, we've got that down to sort of five or below. We're still on 10 millibars. We'll go back. We're going to go to special functions. Uh, service action emissions control circuit. No, I don't want to do a regeneration. Uh, spare part. Emissions control circuit. Replacement of the particle filter. Now that the particle filter is clean enough, um, you can tell her it's had a new one, start the engine and allow it to run for one minute. So the engine just wants to confirm that the filter is... Uh, clean enough. So that's going to read the uh, DPF pressure now and if the pressure is low enough it will be a confirmation that it's complete. 
Now that's complete, we'll go back and see if we need to delete the codes. Oh, they're already already gone. On some cars, once you reset the DPF, the codes just disappear, but sometimes you have to reset them afterwards. So now we've reset that, we can get the rivets all the way up. And if we hold what we were at sort of there, that was the limit before. We're now on 20. It's, uh, it's had a, few, a little bit of time for the fluid to soak in. And if we let the vehicle idle, let me let that screen focus there. We go down to zero. So two and a half thousand revs. Idle, zero. We'll go up past, say, 3,000, where I normally, that's where I normally hold it at. We have uh, 50 millibars. So I'd say that's as good as a brand new DPF there. Let's let go of the accelerator. So that's it, we are all done. It's another job well done. See you in the next video.